Hey. Hi. <laughs> okay, how do we start this? Uh, welcome to this a crossover podcast between Zero Knowledge and Epicenter. <laughs> you may recognize our voices, but this is actually one of the... F I mean, I'm not on video very often. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, we used to do video. We certainly don't ever do this kind of format. Um, and we're so going to put this on both of our channels. Is that the plan? That's the plan. Yeah. Neat. So, yeah, this is kind of cool that yeah. we get to sit down in person and like do this. So we're actually sitting in the Collider Ventures office in Tel Aviv. Uh, that is what is behind that. us. Tel Aviv is behind us. That's the water out there. It's actually quite beautiful. Um, we're in the Zengo and Beam office. Mm -hmm. And so Beam is the Mimblewimble Mimble 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 <laughs> implementation. <laughs> and Zengo, which is a cryptocurrency wallet that has like keyless... Um, keyless access and that sort of thing. So so we wanted to uh, do a little bit of a recap yeah. on the last week or so, the Tel Aviv blockchain week, which was uh, really interesting, uh, really good, actually. I yeah. really quite thoroughly enjoyed it. Totally. So I got here halfway through scaling Bitcoin. Were you, you were here for the whole thing, right? Uh, I arrived the night before, so... Um, I was here, yeah, on, yeah, I got here, like, scaling Bitcoin apparently, first day. Apparently, there was another event. There, there was something, was else before. something before, but I don't know what it was. It was like D, D, and D or something Some like tech that. thing, yeah. So, scaling Bitcoin, I had heard of, I mean, I've heard of for many years. I've never been to one. Um, I only caught day two. Yeah. But maybe as a kickoff, like, what, what was your, you, you got a little bit more scaling yeah. Bitcoin than I did. So, what was your takeaway? So Scale Bitcoin was interesting because also it was my first one. And, you know, go, we go to conferences a lot and we meet a lot of our, our guests there, I think, respectively. Um, scaling Bitcoin, I, I, I kind of saw a lot of like the early Epicenter guests for some reason because oh. a lot of the early Epicenter guests were more like on the Bitcoin side of things. Yeah. So um, a lot of those people were there. And... I, you know, it was kind of cool to put faces on, on, on those people and, and to sort of recognize that there's quite a, um, a long-standing um, you know, ecosystem here of like Bitcoiners and that kind of overlaps into the cryptography space yeah. that's very present here. And so that was uh, kind of at a high level um, an interesting thing to, to realize. And and then in terms of the content, so I mean, it it was much. There were much more talks about non Bitcoin things that I thought was kind of interesting and somewhat surprising. Yeah. Um, you know, there was like a plasma cash talk. Um, there were other other talks that you know didn't didn't necessarily have to do with Bitcoin specifically, but um, I guess overlap with Bitcoin in, in some way or another. Mm -hmm. um, there yeah. was a lot of zero knowledge. There was I heard. a lot of zero knowledge stuff. I sort stuff. of missed, yeah. so I feel like a lot of the zero knowledge stuff seemed to have been on the first day. Yeah. Like Ben Fish presenting Supersonics. Yeah. This was like a lot of people were excited about it. I was excited about it, but couldn't make it. So, yeah. <laughs> so o I didn't o see it. <laughs> Oleg Andrev also gave a talk on this thing that was just like way over my head. ZKVM. Z ZKVM, which I hope we, we'll get to do an episode on the podcast at some point. Uh, so... Yeah, it was super technical, uh, much more technical than I'm usually uh, comfortable with, but I did learn a few things. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention was that, you know, I, I mean, I hadn't been to a Bitcoin conference since Amsterdam 2014, like the foundation, wow. the Bitcoin Foundation conference. And I was kind of, I guess, maybe tainted by crypto Twitter because I really expected to get there and... I don't know, just have like arguments with people, <laughs> but it was actually quite cordial. There was yeah. none of that there. Uh, Vitalik actually sh was there for, I think, both days, which I was like, when I saw him, I was like, what? <laughs> what is he doing here? <laughs> I mean, he, he started there too. Right, right. But that's not then. This is now. Yeah. And so I, I guess uh, I was yeah pleasantly surprised and actually quite happy to see that uh, there is some... Um, you know, behind all of the drama and the tribalism that exists on Twitter, there are people who are actually able to have conversations with each other, um, at, you know, a technical level, but also a philosophical level. And so that yeah, was no, very I nice. That was nice. So p I think people need to meet more in person and just leave Twitter behind. I was told, so 
I asked some people what scaling Bitcoin was like for. What was the usual, like, what is the scaling Bitcoin all about? Yeah. And I heard from a few people that it was the moment when Bitcoiners would like pause the Twitter fights, come and sort of like listen to some random ideas for two days. Yeah. And like Enter- di- digest it, entertain, entertain these ideas. Entertain these ideas. And then, yeah. and then go back to Twitter. That was yeah. like the way it was presented. I mean, it's true that, um, I mean, even the, I guess the audience was fairly heavy Bitcoin. Sure. Yeah, definitely. But the presenters were like half half. Yeah. Yeah. This Although is true. I got I got a chance to learn more about Lightning and there's so much of the Bitcoin world that I actually never I never really got into because I joined, you know, in 2017. Mm. When and I joined and you know, I'm based in Berlin and Berlin is definitely like an mm. Ethereum city. Yeah. And so Bitcoin was always a reference but not necessarily like the core of my Yeah. Um, curriculum even like yeah. my, my learnings about the space yeah I, I, I get that yeah I mean being in Berlin you don't get to you know, cross over with with many Bitcoin people from you know quite often I suppose yeah. um, but so that was uh, that was Wednesday and Thursday and then mm-hmm. there were two days off of course here in Israel uh, so Friday and Saturday are like the weekend and then Sunday is like you know people go Monday. back to work it's like Monday <laughs> so on, on Sunday there was um, uh, ethereal uh, which uh, which I, I attended for like half the day. I, I really wanted to see um, Oriental, Oriel Ohayan, uh, who's the CEO of Zengo. He did uh, a panel with um, with the COO of Libra, uh, which was interesting. Ooh. So I I, 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 um, I think I tweeted about that. There's like a tweet storm about it if you guys are interested in some of the high level learnings there. Then, uh, but you were at the Starkware um, sessions workshop, which so, I've heard a lot of really great things about. So that was called Starks 101. It was one of the neatest workshop setups I've ever seen. Just like really well thought out. And it was long. It was like four or five hours. So you got there, there was like a little bit of mingling, and then there were four presenters, and they'd present maybe like a 10 minute presentation. And then they had, they built this. Oh, what was it called? I want to say like Jupiter. It was some sort of um, a Jupiter notebook. A Jupiter yeah, notebook. It's like a Python thing. Yeah. yeah, and so basically you could learn the concept and then try coding it up. Actually, like a very simplified form, but coding yeah. it up with I a think, lot of uh, it, help. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but a Jupiter notebook is is sort of a specification, a formal specification, on then how you then code something up in Python. I think it could be. I mean, at least yeah. the way this was used, though, it was it was like courseware. Okay. Like you'd have a question like, can you solve this bit of the code? Okay. And then if you couldn't, you could actually reveal the solution. Okay. So it was really made like a, like a mini class. Okay. And, you know, there were 70 people. There was, I mean, highly technical. Everyone had laptops. It was set up like a classroom. A yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of packed. And what was, I mean, it was, I've gone through a lot of workshops and I always get something out of them, but this was the first time that I saw just like a room. It, here's what it was. It was like the perfect mixture of an industry workshop and an academic workshop. And okay. it's perfect for this space because zero knowledge isn't easy. It isn't. It isn't necessarily like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. And yet, so like you could go all the way to academia, but there needs to be some sort of bridge to yeah. the engineering world. And right. this was actually really cool. It was super inspiring. I hope that they take it out of, like, I hope that they actually do that again, like, use it as a format. And I would love to see it for other other ideas, too, like something like uh, maybe a snark construction or some other kind of construction done in that format. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 so I, I heard that they're going to be releasing the code and all of the stuff. So I, I think I, that will be there, but I do think the experience of, like, the, yeah, the, the people workshop. who work on it presenting was really cool. Because right, you had, like, mentors also helping totally. you. Okay. And yeah. how did you, did you manage to build your Stark Prover? <laughs> <laughs> I understood everything, okay? Really? Okay. I'm not sure I would have understood everything. <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm not, I, I tried a little bit, like I tried to solve some of the problems, I, I didn't really get them, but I definitely got, like, even, and maybe that's something to be said, even though I'm not proficient in Python at all, I still got something out of the workshop. I didn't feel like it was just like people coding around and I wasn't doing something because there was so much concept and theory. Mm. That is where I actually got greater insight into something that I've been studying in a way for a while, and I did. I totally felt it was worth it. It's just that when people were actually going through the the code, I was, you know, talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Outside, not distracting people, yeah, but yeah. you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 um, I, uh, I went sightseeing that day, yeah. but um, uh, yeah. Well, you I gotta do it. I hope that I hope that they do it again, so I can I can attend next time. So uh, following that Monday, we did Stark Recessions, and I was the MC of one of the stages. So I saw my stage. Yeah. But I like I'm curious what you what was your take? Well, as an I was event? only in that stage. Oh. <laughs> so there was two stages. There was the I guess the sort of application stage, and then there was the academic stage. Yeah. I thought that the. I would probably learn more and get more out of the application stage because uh, I thought the ap- academic stage would probably be way over my head in terms of te- you know techniques and technology. Um, I, there are a few talks that I might go back and listen and watch, uh, but I was um, so it was a good conference. Well, at least on on that stage, I, I felt that the talks were uh, technical, but they were still you know digestible and sort of um, very educative. Uh, so, you know, um, I mean, the first part was very much on DEXs. Yeah. There was like a lot of stuff about ways DEXs. Of thinking about yeah. DEXs. Yeah. Dex, DEXs were really with like sort of the hot topic there and like DEXs with privacy and this sort of thing. So like Martin Copeland gave a talk and there was like this, this talk about, uh, by one of the, one of the product, uh, people at Starkware. Yeah, yeah. Right. Who also gave a talk about DEXs. So that was really one of the most present topics, I think. And yeah, it's sort of a relevant topic, I think, if you're building a DEX uh, to want to integrate privacy. I thought David Vorick's talk on, like, the problem yes. with trusted setup was really good. I <laughs> thought I loved his talk. It was very um, accessible and very, yeah. like, grounding. Yeah. I don't think it should, like, I don't think it was set, I don't think it was, like, I don't think he was presenting to scare people off from continuing to do amazing research because in the last month there's just been this explosion of really cool ideas, but a lot of them around the trusted setup model, either, even if it's trying to get rid of the trusted setup, it's still sort of playing with that concept. Yeah. And his presentation <laughs> was very much about like the problem with that period. So it was a little bit of a critique, but I still thought it was, I thought it was really good to hear. I don't know. Yeah. So I, I think what's interesting there is um, you get to see the different layers of trust because that's, I asked the question is like, okay, well if, you have like a trusted setup and okay, there's different types of trusted setup and you might be making different trust assumptions about all of those. But then do you assume that the hardware is trusted? Do you assume that the hardware hasn't been compromised or that the hardware doesn't have some kind of thing that allows it to like regenerate random numbers or something like, I mean, I'm not an expert in this field, but like I, I can see how there, and I've heard the argument that there are also hardware attacks. And so his answer was, well, you, you know, you would get four, pieces of hardware, four processors from four different manufacturers that would be generating. So you just sort of see the different layers and you realize that it's all about making trust assumptions and the probabilistic uh, totally. nature of like the different layers of trust that you um, that you have to engage with. So um, yeah, I, w- I would love to do a podcast with him at some point. And so that, I think one of my biggest takeaways, I mean, this is a takeaway from the month, just like the amount of new protocols coming out but one of my favorite talks from that event was ellie ben sasson's intro talk where he kind of outlined this landscape of zero knowledge proof stuff and like where different ones live in in terms of like what kind of cryptography and like the he also talked about like the era in which the cryptography was designed Mm. so he showed like the cryptography that starks fit under were actually comes from work from the 70s it's like the collision free hash functions i think hash work yeah. And then you look at Snark. Snark is actually coming from work from the 80s and 90s, I believe. Maybe yeah. even, no, maybe even later. It's like, it's a much later entry point. Yeah, 80s and 90s sounds. And I think yeah. uh, the, the comparison that he was making there was just that it's newer cryptography, which sounds like it might be better cryptography, but it was newer cryptography in order to like create efficiency because that old cryptography was too slow. But what's happened is the old cryptography has started to catch up, and at least it's the belief of Starkware, which would make sense, that that older cryptography within which Starks live could be uh, safer. Yeah. That's kind of But also the older cryptography, I think one of his points was also that the older cryptography has roots that go much deeper. Ah, yeah. And... You know, there's much more a stake on this old cryptography. So if you just take collision-free hash functions, there are trillions of dollars of transactions that already. that are already secured on this thing, like these are cri- cri- cryptographic primitives that have been tested and mm-hmm. and like battle tested for you know decades. And as you get 
you know, he had this like great slide where there's like a big tree and like the big tree has all this stuff from the seventies. And as like, as you move ahead in time, you have like smaller trees where like the roots are much, uh, are not as deep uh, yeah. or deeply ingrained, but it also shows like just how fragile things are. Like, and if one of these, you know, prim you know, very primitive cryptographic hash functions or something, I don't know, like that was built in the seventies falls apart. The whole thing, the, the whole thing falls <laughs> apart. And you know, we're not even yeah. talking about quantum resistance stuff or like, you know, the, all the problems that that, um, introduces also in the in the field yeah it's yeah no, I, so that was that was the talk i mean that in general that topic of trying to map it is just interesting to me mm. and I, I liked the format i liked the sort of the starting point and i definitely want to do like personally i want to do a little bit more work to map out like what each one of those sections really looks like and where they're going i mean i think there'd be there'd be different opinions about like the security of those various trees mm. but i i just really liked the pres I, I liked the framing i thought it was great yeah. Yeah. And actually, so personally being here in Tel Aviv, like I think of Tel Aviv as, and I might, I might be wrong and it's weird that I'm going to like boom, beam this out to the world, but, um, I think of the zero knowledge hubs as being mm. Tel Aviv, Berlin and SF. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that there's, I think there's some really good companies in London and there's some good, there's, there's mm. definitely good companies outside of these hubs, but that's what I'm seeing emerging. And it has to do a little bit with like the level of research or the fun, academia, like, academic uh, yeah. cryptography <laughs> hubs. I mean, you could also argue like there's Leuven, there's Belgium, sure. but yeah. for zero knowledge specifically, at least these are the ones that are emerging right now. And so being here this week for me, it was like, it was the first time I come to Tel Aviv in general and it's, like I'm coming to a place where I've been following or spoken to so many projects. So it's been really exciting to kind of get a sense of like the roots go deep here, <laughs> where they come from. <laughs> this is where they come from. Yeah. yeah. What's next on your radar? Where are you going next? Are you going to keep traveling? I am done with traveling for <laughs> the foreseeable future. Um, unless, unless the FOMO really, really gets me, which I, I doubt it will. Okay. I, I'm not going to DEF CON or SF blockchain week. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been doing a lot of traveling over the last few months, especially like going to Berlin for blockchain week and like every one of these weeks is great. And it's, you know, very, um, you know, you learn a lot and you meet a lot of great people, but, um, I also want to do some work. And, <laughs> Good uh, idea. That's also on my radar. So yeah, doing work is on my radar. Uh, I'm going yeah. though. You're going. So I'm yeah. going to be so tell us, yeah, tell very likely at, it, at DevCon. It's like a, that's a, that's a. A good chance. Mm -hmm. and, and tell us about your event. So yeah, I'm actually going to be doing my own event, the Zero Knowledge Summit. This would be the fourth in the series. I've been doing it every six months in the past, always in Berlin. And this is the first time I take it to SF. It's happening on October 26th. It's extremely technical and there's limited spots, but there is an application form out right now. Mm. Um, I think you could probably find it through like the Zero Knowledge Twitter. For speakers? Or this for is for speakers attendees. and attendees. So okay. we actually do, because it's so small, we actually do an application process for all of that. Okay. Um, we really are looking for researchers and devs. So like if you have someone on your team who fits that profile, like maybe send them our way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about it. It's like, it's super interesting because like it's the fourth one and the first one that we did was very was quite general and very high level we had like an introduction to zero knowledge proofs like a whole talk on that like really really you know the billiard balls and stuff like that and the second mm. one started to get like more focused we were looking at uh, privacy i think privacy tech and then scaling was the third one but mm. now what's happened is basically it's become more and more dense like are more and more technical we've kind of gone further and further down the, the rabbit hole in terms of content so i'm very much looking forward to what comes and all those people in sf all like i like i mentioned i think of sf definitely as a zero knowledge hub mm -hmm. a lot of people couldn't make it over to berlin for a one day event which makes yeah. sense um so i'm bringing it to them and then they have no excuse, but they have to be there. If you do it here, it'll be, have to be like three days. Yeah, true enough. I mean, you should do it here I mean, next year. this is totally, uh, I, it, this is one of the reasons I wanted to come this week too, is to like check it out, to yeah. see like, could I do a ZK Summit here too? You probably could. And I think I could. Yeah. yeah. So. And I mean, I'll come because it's close and um, <laughs> there's the beach. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Is that, is that all we have to say here? I think that's a good wrap. For people who are watching this on my channel or <laughs> vice versa, yeah. tell us a little bit about Epicenter and how um, do they find you. So Epicenter is a podcast and we explore the economic, 
technical and societal impacts of blockchain technology at a high level and sometimes at a little level. I mean, it depends who we have on the show and who's hosting it. You can subscribe at epicenter.tv or just on iTunes or your favorite podcast uh, player. And you should also, if you're listening to <laughs> on my channel, you should definitely uh, subscribe to NS Podcast. It's a Zero Knowledge Podcast. Which and can be found at zeroknowledge.fm. Uh, we talk, like, so... I think it's become more and more of like a zero knowledge podcast. I would say like the content. It's about, we still talk about blockchain in general, but I think it's like about 60% zero knowledge mm. stuff now. Yeah. We've really kind of like narr like focused in. And I think just to maybe to wrap up, one of the reasons we thought it would be fun to do this podcast together is that our podcasts are often kind of like seen together I think in the same category you guys have always been incredibly like from the very beginning incredibly open and supportive for us entering this space and I want to say thank you t to you for that and I do think of them as being very complimentary <laughs> yeah absolutely so, yeah I, I, I mean yeah. especially where you're going more like especially where yeah you're, you're doing you're spending more time on on zero knowledge stuff um you know how ha like having a podcast in the ecosystem that is like focus really focus on that niche uh is is great for like not only the blockchain ecosystem but also there's just the zero knowledge you know space totally. in general uh because i don't think there's any other you know media organizations out there that are doing like specific zero knowledge stuff and like getting all these kind of zero knowledge um uh, researchers together at events and, mm -hmm. and and advancing that so yeah that's great i think it's like it's, it's great for me i mean i love privacy so uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah um, nice Cool. So thanks and see you, you know, in the next edition of you know, short videos, this is. whatever this is. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Ciao. All right. See you later.